It's Bartel versus Pragnananda at the Prague Masters 2024. The duo clash again at the Prague uh, festival because last time they played each other was in 2019 where they were in the challengers Bartel had won that Prague was a little kid now he's a super GM and uh, this is going to be exciting it's Sicilian on the board Bartel won the challengers last year and that is how he's qualified to the masters Prague of course one of the best in the world with 2747 and a candidate this is going to be very exciting we have the Sicilian Rosolimo on the board and Prague goes for knight f6 move order well the main move here is to take on c6 but knight c3 also makes a lot of sense <coughs> you just develop your piece defend the pawn Prague goes for d6 here maybe e5 is definitely playable but Bartel decides to play d4 and convert it into an open Sicilian now what essentially <coughs> black is going to get here is maybe the bishop pair maybe the strong center and white will get a lead in development so first prak takes queen takes on d4 because now you can't take the queen it's pinned here and prak breaks the pin attacking the queen you don't want to waste time moving the queen which is also possible so bartel takes Generally, you don't give up your bishop for the knight in this way. But here, if you see, black has all the trump cards. He has the bishop pair. He has the strong center. But what white has is very, very quick development happening. You see, all his three pieces are developed. And next move, he's going to long castle, which means that his rook also comes into the game. Look at that. He's long castled and then he'll bring his other rook to e1. In this way, both his rooks are fantastically placed. Bishop e7 played and now you see the other rook has come to e1. So in this way, step by step, Bartel is making use of the lead in development. But what Prague says is that, look, if you're not able to do anything now, Matthias, I'm going to castle. Well, I'm doing something now, says Matthias. He plays his knight to d5. And now you can't take because ED opens up the rook would be too dangerous. So Prague takes with the bishop. And the game has sharpened like anything. ED5. You can't play E5 because I'll simply take, take. Rook takes E5 with the threat of D6. So he chops off the pawn on A2. But its next move is quite difficult. Rook D3. But Bartel actually finds it. What a nice move. The idea is that now you are not going to, you are threatening rook a3 actually. So castles has been played. Well, rook a3 now there is queen d5, but d takes e6. And if you take back f e6, then there is rook a3 and white is clearly better there in that line. So Prague pushes his pawn to d5 and white just takes the pawn on f7. Wow. So. While black queen is near the white king, the white pieces are right in the center and Bartel now chops it off. Well, the best move here would have been c3 or even on the previous move to get an advantage as white. But Bartel is so tempted by this sacrifice, he sacrificed an exchange and now he takes on f6. So essentially, <coughs> what Matthias is saying is that Prague, your king is exposed. My rook is on the third rank, looking to switch. Now I attack your rook. My knight is ready to move in. So there are a lot of problems that you are facing. But Prague also has play with queen a1. He goes first rook g7 and keeps his king safe. And Bartel plays his knight to g5. Many, many interesting ideas. One of them being knight e6 followed by rook g3. And the knight and queen will create havoc. So there is a check which comes in. Now the queen has to go, king has to go to d2. And one of the good things for Prague is that he can bring his queen back into the defense with a check. Now c3 seems like the most logical move. Yes, he plays c3. Queen b6, attacking the queen. And the pawn, this is the best decision. 
queen takes queen has happened and after pawn takes queen now the rook attacks the knight on g2 but Bartel wins another pawn so he has two pawns and a knight for a rook and Prague says give me back one of my pawns he plays his pawn to h6 black would have some realistic chances of winning this if his pawn structure was better but for now his pawns are a bit mangled up and now Bartel is going to set up a very famous drawing pattern with rook d7 which is knight f6 knight h7 knight f6 back rook g7 can be played for a win but maybe Prague is not very happy with that rook d6 attacks both the pawns and he plays rook c8 if he gets one more move maybe he'll be happy to play rook c6 but the fact that now Bartel has knight f6 and Prague is such a fighter he generally doesn't like to draw such positions he likes to play them till the end but here he realized that there is no chance to sort of win here and so he has agreed to a draw of course not king h8 because of rook h7 mate so king f8 played and now yes knight at 7 check king g8 and the players will agree to a draw after king f8 very very sharp game short game but a sharp one and with this the game ends in a draw Bartel keeps his plus score against Prague in Prague, uh, but it was a very, very nice game. In fact, he could have gotten a big advantage if he was calm on C3 and Prague asks Bartel if he would like to analyze. This is always a fantastic gesture by Prague. You know, he doesn't look at his result. He doesn't look at the rating of his opponent or anything. He just wants to analyze, learn and keep moving in his journey to become one of the best in the world.